Hey there, welcome to my panel that I'm co-hosting with Brent here. Actually, I'm doing this and, and he's over there, but uh, we'll, we'll figure that out. Um, this is a uh, panel on anime that, that we watch at 3 a.m. because there's nothing else on and, and you, you really want to dedicate your time to other really good anime. But these are anime you should watch and when, when you have the time for it, the, the kind of stuff that you can just like watch, walk away from it, come back to it 10 years later, and then continue if you choose to. So these are the ones that we're going to just kind of uh, uh, talk about. We each came up with three uh, for the other to watch, and uh, we're both uh, conversant in these animes now. So we're going to talk a little bit about these guys. And um, so let's start with Samurai 7. Sounds good. Where did you come across Samurai 7? Like, what was your... Um, so, Samurai 7 um, was a gift. Uh, my older sister, uh, Kari, uh, she was very nice enough to actually go out to a store that sells anime, like Sam Goody. Mm -hmm. And she went out there, and she had no idea what I watched. And she just said, so my brother likes to watch anime. Can you help me? And so I'm pretty sure the guy just kind of reached behind him and just said, that, here you go. Here's, here you go, yeah. Samurai 7. And um, she probably thought, oh, Samurai, Steve knows about Samurai, he will like that. So the thing that she got me was actually a really nice um, box set of the first four episodes with actual um, 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 storyboards, uh, drawings to it. So it was really kind of a nice gift. Uh, watched it and I realized that I was watching Akira Kurosawa's uh, Seven Samurai. And so then later on, as I watched the series, it was on, I believe, um, Toonami at the time. Yeah. This is 2004, so I think that was Toonami. And I realized as I'm watching the series that it is a almost blow by blow of the movie um, Seven Samurai by Akira Kurosawa, to the point where I realized that, oh, all Seven Samurai names in the anime are the same names in the movie. Gotcha. And so I, I was just like, oh, wow. And so, uh, watching this, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it because, you know, of course, I'm familiar with the movie. Mm -hmm. Watched this and um, just thought it was just a very unique um, visual style, very, very unique story. Actually, it's not really a unique story from a Japanese perspective. They, they talk about um, this kind of folklore a little bit, mm -hmm. a, a lot. And, you know, it's, you know, the samurai that comes in to save the village. Yeah. You know, typical samurai story. You know, it's almost like... Uh, Wild West kind of, you know, Clint Eastwood comes in and saves the day. Um, so, yeah, so that's, that's, that's about where, where I got it from. And, uh, and again, this is, you know, I wouldn't say it's in my top 10, but definitely at 3 a.m. It's a nice little, hey, let's take a watch what, and, and, and take a look at it. So, so what do you think what, what, as you watched it? Um, it was a lot of fun. I had some of, I think, I think I may have had a... A demo disc of like the first episode of Samurai Seven from like New Type USA. Oh so yeah, and you got those. I remember. I love remember, those discs. It was great. Because um, I remember being aware of it. I remember seeing like the first episode, or I remember having seen the first episode. When I came back to watch it for this, we watched the first three episodes. Um, I didn't remember a dang thing about <laughs> any of the actual plot of of this, um, but. I'm actually glad I came back and watched this because the first episode is very much kind of set up, establishing characters, establishing the scenario, and I, I've seen Seven Samurai, so I was familiar with that, and then getting into the story, um, I really liked the, the way it approaches it, where it's a 26 episode TV series, I think. Yes. And mm -hmm. so obviously it's much more stretched out uh, than the movie, although the movie is wrong um yeah. <laughs> but um yeah I, I i really appreciated this like, okay we're gonna have kind of we're gonna introduce basically a new samurai every episode more or less um and we're just kind of gonna see how that goes and really develop and flesh out okay who are the bad guys here i really loved the sci-fi aesthetic to this the mm -hmm. fact that it's in this very grungy kind of star Wars y tatooine kind of a of a, a planet and environment um, but then that's, you know, connected with or, or sort of contrasted with the very kind of 
traditional Japanese village, but not quite traditional Japanese village. Right. Where it's like, they've obviously tweaked a lot of the clothing and so forth to be um, uh, you know, a little bit more, more fanciful. I'm, I'm sure there was, you know, this kind of thing existed, but it's not the right, typical right. thing. Um, and I, I just really enjoyed it. Um, I think three episodes in, still the characters are just kind of, you either like them or you don't. Um, right. Like they don't yeah. really do a lot of a lot to to really build the characters, but again, I'm sure that's something that's going to happen. Um, and it's weird because, like, I had, it must be one of those things for the Japanese where it's like we all know what this is, right? So we don't have to it, we don't have to explain anything, we don't have to introduce anything. Um, and so there's a little bit of that to the movie where it's like, and like they obviously do set up and and, and explain things. But it's a, it's a different kind of TV series. It's, I think it's a perfect example of like the 3 a.m. anime where it's like, okay, this is not what I would typically, you know, <laughs> right, about yeah. to get, not what I typically like, like love, but it is that really unique kind of experience. Well, it, you know, I think you brought up a good point about it being kind of like Star Wars in that, you know, in the Star Wars universe, you have that weird kind of like, here's the village that's really low tech, uh -huh. but you have hyperspace warships and, and things <laughs> and lasers and stuff. And then suddenly you're landing down and tattooing in this dusty, dusty town where people are still riding things and <laughs> like animals instead of like actually driving around in, in, in cars or jetpacks. There's not even jetpack. You know, yeah. did you notice there's not that many jetpacks in, in Star Wars? Oh, yeah. Anyway, um, uh, Samurai Seven is is um, very much like that because you know you you see the village and it's and it's basically a a, a Japanese village. Yeah. I mean, it's, there's there's really not any tech there, mm -hmm. but then you go to the city and you're right, it's kind of grimy, only almost like steampunkish, mm -hmm. yeah. and and you know and there's there's tech there, mm -hmm. but clearly there is a caste system as to where you go mm -hmm. and and how and how quickly you can get. To that, to that tech, and um, one of the interesting things about that is uh, the Red Samurai, yeah, who is completely mechanical. Talk about steampunk, yeah. right? You know, and he's <laughs> he's got a whistle on the side of his head. Um, he's uh, his character is played by uh, Toshiro Mifune in the actual yeah. movie, um, and you know, just him just being just over the top and the mechanical and, and just like kind of jittery and all over the place. But yeah, it's it's um, it's very much uh, an anime where if you're looking for a slow burn, this is mm. kind of something that that eases you into it as, because it, they do as the series goes on um, introduce start introducing the, the other characters. Mm. Um, the scene where the the one who catches the the arrows and all that stuff, the oh, really yeah. big one with the scar. The scene where he walks in and kind of stops inside the entrance, mm -hmm. where the apprentice samurai is ready to strike, and he just knows that he's there. That's a scene in, in, in the movie. Um, so the, it's it's kind of nice how how they do that. Mm -hmm. But then setting up like the bad guys and how like at first you're just like these are the big bads. <laughs> yeah, really? Yeah. really? This, this dude? Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. But it sets up for something that that comes yeah. along along yeah. later. Yeah. But. Um, yeah, if if you are a a kind of a movie file, um, and and you've seen um, Seven Samurai, this is a, a pretty faithful um, rendition. As as a matter of fact, I think now of course I would have passed by that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, I think his I guess his estate kind of gave the stamp of approval because his name is actually everywhere mm. <laughs> on the on the marketing for it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, so that's that's. That's what. That's an interesting one. Like, if you want to be able to think about something at three a.m. in the morning, I'm not sure if you want to do that, but you know, three a.m. Exactly. Um, yeah. Speaking of three a.m. anime, um, all that. Um, let's talk about Expelled from Paradise. Ooh, yes. Um, this, I think, I got. Um, and I may be mixing memories. I think I got this on DVD from Netflix. Oh that, wow! That was okay. Thing. Um, because one of those things I'm like, I am not going to buy that. Like, I, I'm, you know, <laughs> just like the visuals and, the, and, and all that kind of stuff. I was just like, okay, you know, all CGI anime looks cool, but I, I just, I don't know, single movie, who knows? Right. Um, so I think I rented it, um, watched it, and boy, I have, I had like mixed feelings. 
about this, <laughs> about this movie. Because um, it's darn fun. Um, mm-hmm. You know, big, bold, brassy sci-fi. Um, oh, yeah. Strong female character. Um, uh, uh, pilot. Um, very, you know, self-assured. Um, and uh, giant robots. Um, you know, can't argue with giant robots. Exactly. Um, but then, like, the more I thought about the story, the more uncomfortable I got with kind of the implications of the story. We'll get to that later. What were your kind of reactions to it? So, um, Expelled the Par- uh, from Paradise was something that has always been on Netflix for me. Uh, I didn't see it. I, I saw. I, I didn't see it until you actually mm. recommended it for this panel. Um, but. Uh, it, it's always been on the list to watch because I'm just like, well, it's something to watch and it looks kind of interesting. The story sounds interesting. Yeah. I'll, I'll get around to it mm-hmm. many years later, <laughs> you know, you know, finally, you know, you're just like, okay, I want you to watch this. And I'm like, going, oh, okay. Now I have the excuse to, mm-hmm. to watch this movie. And one of the things that puts me off, uh, put me off of it from really watching it is, is the CGI animation. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm not, it's gotten a lot better over time and it yeah. will continue to get better but at first I've, I've never been really bought into it because it does that creepy little like kind of wave motion it looks like you know like an anime zombie kind of thing going on <laughs> um but this there wasn't so much of that in in yeah. in, in this one so I, I got to watch it and um it was fun it was fun I, I you know the 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 actual action scenes the 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 combat mm-hmm. um was really nice I really enjoyed that and I just kind of, but there were a couple moments at towards the beginning where I just kind of rolled my eyes a little bit, and I was just like, going, "Oh yeah, here we go with the skinny clad, oh yeah, know, protagonist, <laughs> you know." And when I say skinny, scantily clad, I, I do mean, I mean, it's just like going, "And how are we not in N- NC seventeen? Mm-hmm. Um, you know?" Yeah. Um, and so, but she's an adult in this in this construct world. But by the way, this is a world that part of the world is Earth where people live in bodies and, you know, live out their lives. And then there's this place up in space where people are born, but then their consciousness are put into like an AI construct and that's how they live their lives. And so there we're going in from the perspective of the AI construct. And so she's an adult and she's getting hit on. Then the thing happens and then the big battle happens there. And then, you know, they're like, Oh, well, you're going to have to send you back down to earth, meet up with this guy and hopefully you'll be able to solve the problem. And so then they're like, okay, but we got to give you a body. So we have your genome on records. So we're going to, we're going to, we're going to make your body. Mm-hmm. And she's ripping Mary to go. She wants to get ahead of the other, of the other mm-hmm. agents, because there's like a, a sort of like a, a bounty system where, you know, if you, if you get it first, you get more things mm-hmm. and stuff. And so she wants to get down there as soon as possible. So of course, of course, of course, to safely inhabit her mind into a body, they can't progress it more quickly past the age of 16 or else there'll right. be problems. Of course. So of course we have to put you yeah, in an age. Very well known problem, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm just kind of like, oh my God, are you kidding me? Yeah. So you go from, from an attractive woman to an attractive 16 year old, which makes you know me feel uncomfortable. Yeah. And- Wearing a plug suit. Well, wait, right, wearing a plug suit basically. Yeah. And has ridiculously long hair. I'm like, like yeah. you're sitting, you know, someone into battle with that. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then they, they send her down to, to earth. And this is where I kind of go, mm, uh, because you know, they, it's like, you would think at this point they would understand disease, which they don't. She catches a cold. Uh-huh. You would understand that you know, you're, you're be breathing in stuff. Mm-hmm. And so she doesn't understand that. And she brings it, breathes in. She goes, how can anybody breathe down here? It's just like, well, you know, this is air. Yeah. And, and and her plug suit for her for her robot has these wonderful boots that makes you wonder if her feet are bound. Yeah, because they're little tiny things, high heels, and I'm just like going, how what is going on? Yeah. So, but once you get past that, it's actually the, the action was really nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's there, there's very interesting concepts in here, mm-hmm. like the the the, the bad guy mm-hmm. um, is is a sentient robot who's just wanting to go into space and is just inviting people to come along yeah. and you know it just doesn't want to be lonely and and they talk about music mm. and music is 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 always fun you know to have talk about and you know the you know 
motivation of music and things like that. And it was just kind of one of the characters, the, the other character, the, the male character is kind of fun in that he has a favorite band and it's the favorite band of the robot. And there's like, we're buddies, you know, <laughs> and it, it's just this. And it's and the CGI kind of works for this. But there comes like, as you were saying, there comes a point where you just realize, oh, wow. OK, we're getting to the point where she's supposed to be leaving a system that is controlling her going <laughs> to another system that is controlling her in a different way. Yeah. So, you know, there, there's a little bit, a little bit of misogyny kind of yeah. going on here. Yeah. It just, it, yeah. you know, the more you, you look at it, the more you realize it like really devalues the main character a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and kind of consistently undercuts her as the strong female character and is, and is constantly subsuming her to the male characters. It's like, oh, that's a shame. Like that, that's, yeah. that, that sucks. Um, by the way, this is uh, 2014 was when it was 2014, when it was yeah. About. So if you think of your CGI sort of timeline, right, it's, it's right in there where it's like, okay, not quite what it is now, but not, you know, the very early right. days. So, yeah. yeah. 16-bit animation. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Let's fight Kung Fu action. Uh, my arms don't work. Um <laughs> Yeah, I'm melding um, into the background. For what it's worth, this was directed by uh, Seiji Mitsushima, uh, director of the original Full Metal Alchemist, um, as mm -hmm. well as Gundam Double O, uh, famously. Um, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, that was a, a, that's a whole other story. Um, and a um, bunch of other uh, various and sundry things. But, uh, um, oh, he did. Die. Okay, sorry, I'm going to get distracted. Um, <laughs> but um, also uh, famously written by uh, Gen Urobuchi um, mm. uh, of Poela Majimura Kamada. Oh, that's right. Infamy, if you will. Yeah. Um, and uh, a number of other things. So, uh, yeah. So, um, those might be names where you're like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm going to watch it. You know, who knows? Yeah. I, I would have to say that if you, you know, anyone out there who, who like, oh, it's at 3 a.m. and this is, yeah. they're like on Netflix and this is something you want to watch. Um, despite my misgivings on some of these things, it's fun. Mm -hmm. um, definitely, you, you know, de definitely, definitely watch it. Give it a go and, and just, just, you know, take it for what it is. Yeah. Um, deeper meaning you will not get. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, I got to tell you, I had Genshin feels. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, I had Genshin feels about it. And, you know, I was like, I was like, well, you know, she, could, you know, if you change the outfit a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, she could be, she could be a character in Genshin. Yeah. That's like a sci fi Genshin impact kind of a yeah. feel for that. that that's kind of cool. Um, all right. Let's talk about Gate. Oh, Gate. Oh, Gate. Oh, Gate. We go from one slightly misogynist anime <laughs> to a totally misogynist anime. <laughs> Um, okay, so Gate is, is um, the premise of Gate is simply that uh, this fantasy world, it's a, it's a weirdly reverse isekai kind of mm. thing mm. going on. Yeah. So this Gate appears in the middle of Tokyo, Ginza, and um, these mystical creatures in uh, medieval army come in and they actually invade present day Tokyo. And they they really don't know what's going on. They really don't realize what they're getting into, mm -hmm. and they get their butts handed to them. Um, but the gate is still there, mm -hmm. and the Japanese decide with their with their self defense force to go through the gate to you know make the people who killed some of these other citizens uh, accountable, mm -hmm. and at the same time check out the resources because you know why not? Because you know hey why not? Yeah, you know, it could be ours. Yeah, yeah, um, <clears throat> kind of thing. And so, and so the 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 protagonist who is an otaku, like no jokes, otaku, like dojensi. That that's actually what he was going for that day. Mm -hmm. On his day off, was going to the the convention to get dojensi, mm -hmm. and um, as he's going there, the thing happens, mm -hmm. and he kind of takes control of the situation. And you're just confused because at one point he's yeah. like just like just this like feckless otaku's <laughs> walking into things and he's got things on his phone and they even say he's like 33 years old mm -hmm. you know and so you know you're just like um okay and he proudly declares I'm an otaku mm -hmm. this is all I want to do with my life yeah. and he goes out and then the thing happens and then suddenly he like like changes yeah. and he's doing things and he's able to get because you realize that when they were on the phone 
Mm. And it's the emperor talking to the gate guards. Ah, oh, okay. Telling telling them to let the people in. Mm. And so the, the main character becomes the hero again uh, and whatever. And so he he's part of the, the force that goes to um, to this other fantasy land. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's, it's revealed that he is an actual, he is a active it, yeah, service member. He's not reserved. He's an actual, you know, this is what he does. He's yeah. been promoted to lieutenant, which he doesn't want to do. <laughs> he's just doing the job to have the money to, to be able to get the gents. That's <laughs> literally, and I'm not joking. Yeah, That's yeah. literally what it is. <laughs> So he goes there, and then you know, then you go through the the first three episodes of being introduced to various characters. Um, you're introduced to an elf girl, you're introduced to a uh, wizard mage girl, and you're introduced to the lo- lowly goddess of death <laughs> girl, yep. who is Rory Mercury, mm. and and it's just like it's like oh oh my, oh my, mm. and even in the anime, everyone's just like oh 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 my, <laughs> and. And so, and it's told from the point of view of his unit that's supposed to go out and and contact these villages and try to make friends and things like that. So that's where we are in this thing. Now, the interesting thing about Gate itself is that originally it was a light novel series, mm-hmm. then it became a manga, and then it became an anime. The guy who wrote it is or was an actual member of the Japanese Self Defense Force. Okay. And so this is wrote, written from his perspective of being an otaku and being this at the same time. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that you'll get later on in the anime is like how he goes, and the Japanese Self Defense Force takes all of us hill. Or, you know, and it's very dramatic music and stuff like that. Well, this guy is very pro, let's just say he's pro armament. Armament. <laughs> yes, okay. Very you know, he, so. he very much wants Japan to be, you know, have more of an army, that kind of mm-hmm. thing. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, but it's got this weird seriousness and just this weird kind of like, Oh, here are all the fifteen-year-old girls that we're going to encounter, and I'm thirty-three. <laughs> yeah, you know, mm-hmm. and 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 by the way, there is a, this sort of the same disingenuous thing that they do that they did in Expelled from Paradise, where they go, "Oh, well, the mage girl is fifteen, but the elf is two hundred years old, wow. even though she looks like she's thirteen, mm-hmm. and Roy Mercury, who looks like an eighteen-year-old sex pot, mm-hmm. is actually nine hundred years old. So it's all okay. It's all, fine. It's all okay as long as we don't hit on the mage girl." Mm-hmm. We're, we're we're all okay. And besides, so, the medieval society, like mores are different. Oh, right, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I'm curious to see to, to see what you what you thought of of Gay because I I, I kind of did this with tongue in cheek. I was just like, I wonder if he's going to rip this one. I wonder. <laughs> so, um, it was a bit difficult to start with because it, it's kind of slow paced to start off with. It's very much I'm otaku. See how much otaku I am, which is fine. But it's like, okay, we get it. Um, and the attack on Ginza happens, and that's really cool. Um, you know, seeing all these fantasy creatures in Ginza. And then that kind of goes on for a while. Um, a while. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> and then we... Then that just kind of ends, and then we just get kind of... Almost like a montage of just various things of him and so forth. And the, the storytelling is just a little choppy. Um, what I, I now realize is episodes one and two are all set up. It's just settle yeah. in. It is just set up, and that's you know, it, it's not bad setup. It's just very much the, the, the intent there. Um, you know, episode one is basically here's what happened. Here's the inciting incident, and episode two is here they are in this fantasy world. What the fantasy world is like. Um, episode three is okay. Here, here's the harem, right? Yeah. Um, and once we got to the harem. I was I really got into the groove and was enjoying the show. Um, anime, for, uh, there's a lot of anime for me that kind of like with Samurai Seven. There's, there's a lot of anime that can they can do a lot of things at once. They can have comedy, it can have drama, it can have action, all these various things in relatively equal measure. Um, and I, I feel Gate is very much that where you get this yeah. sort of mixture of a lot of different things. Um, so I definitely enjoy that aspect to it. Um, because the burn is so slow, um, it was hard for me to get a, like a really good read on the series. Like, am I going to enjoy this character that I've only spent thirty seconds with him by the end of episode right. three, basically? So, um, but by that point, I had had enough time with it to understand the characters enough to, I think, enjoy it. Uh, to to kind yeah. of get it and, and, and kind of. Get beyond the train, if you will. 
Um, certainly there's nothing in it that I, I disliked in the sense that, you know, character design, animation, music, all this stuff, everything worked. Um, and one thing that I, I did find difficult, I'd be curious, I've only seen the first three episodes. Um, I had a difficult time getting a bead on the main character because for me, I couldn't tell. Have you seen Ears Monster Captain Tylor or any of the Tylor stuff? Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, Tyler was an anime from like the late 90s, I think. Um, yeah. Basic idea is um, you have hapless idiot sort of lieutenants in the military who kind of stumbles into some you know ridiculous situation and okay. makes all sorts of crazy <clears throat> decisions that always end up working out. And no one can quite tell whether he's actually a genius or actually an idiot, you know, because just how does everything go? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that trope. It, it uh, without giving it away, mm. that is actually answered. It yeah. takes a long time. Okay, it takes a long time, and and but in and it's. I think you are deliberately teased yeah. with okay. with that gotcha. because in about I think four episodes, you meet a character that is higher up in mm. the defense force, mm -hmm. and you're like. Oh really? Ah, okay. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Oh, because you know, keep in mind at the beginning, at the attack of Ginza, he had no problem being stabby. Oh no, 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 not at all. He had no problem. He had no problem pulling the trigger on Alvis Hill. Mm -hmm. He had no problem doing that. Yeah. And and so that and that's actually a plot point mm -hmm. for his fellow soldiers. Particularly the one girl who's just like, who is the wise idiot leading <laughs> us? You know, and so and as you get to learn more of the characters, like one one guy's into cat girls, the, the older sergeant, the top sergeant, into kaiju, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff, and um, things go on. Um, just a warning that this is very much a three AM show, not only just because it's you know something you can walk away from, mm -hmm. but there it's chicka bomba three AM. Oh, it's not head taste, it's not edgy, okay. but it, we, we go places. Okay. We go places. I, and 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 but, one thing I would I would like yeah. to if you if you uh, make your point, just out of curiosity, Rory Mercury, your thoughts? Um, she was one of the ones where I'm like, I still don't have a a good enough beat on her because she okay. comes in and she straight up murders a bunch of guys. Yeah. Um, and like, they're bandits, but still, like it, it is it is it is an execution. Out right. of kind of nowhere, and then she shows up, and then she's clearly kind of the the god of death, you know, with a big scythe and running around, and she has the, I, I love that she has a straight up goth lowly outfit, but no, th these are actually like the the traditional, you know, robes of her right her, her religious of robes. her sect. Sure. Yes, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. It's, she's uh -huh. not trying to be sexy. That's yeah, what the priestess is wearing. Sure. Cool. Um, <laughs> no, but, okay, I got gotcha, you, anime. <laughs> um, uh, so it's one of those things where it's like I, I wasn't immediately on board with her, um, mm -hmm. but it's all execution. It's all how they kind of go there. Right. Um, I did have a laugh out loud moment in the in the show um, where you've got the protagonist Kuhn and cat girl lover next to her. So they're both otaku, right? They're both kind of driving along, and he um, protagonist Kuhn sees Rory in the distance. Yeah, he's got the thing, and he goes, "Whoa, a goth lowly!" And the other guy goes, "What?" Right. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that, you know. Like, yep, Kaku, yep, you know, yep, I appreciate yep. that. <laughs> and he is so jealous. <laughs> so jealous. Roy Mercury wants the ride in the merciless wagon. Right. Yep. Up front. She, she, she has a seat somewhere. Yes, exactly. She yes, yes. She sits somewhere. Um, you know, um, boy, I am not going any further on that one. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, so... Speaking of characters who have no problem with stabbing a guy, <laughs> um, let's talk about Cashier and Sins. Yes, Cashier and Sins. Oh, wow. Okay, so originally this was a sort of a um, evil robot of the week anime, like in 1973, mm -hmm. called Cashhorn, 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 something like that. Okay. Um, the character design is almost the same mm -hmm. um, it, as, as it is in Cashier and Sins. Mm -hmm. The, the robotic dog Friender is in it. Mm, um, yeah. uh, Luna is in it. 
uh, Breaker King or the Black King, as as it was called in, in the 1973 version, um, is in it. And it's a it's sort of just kind of like that, you know, positive, you know, Astro Boy here or, you know, like, was it no underdog here? I come to say the day, you know, and and in the 73 uh, anime, he's a good guy. He's actually a human who decided to become an android so he could fight the evil robots from mm-hmm. taking over the world. And that's basically it. Mm-hmm. Um, Cash and Sins came out in 2009. Something okay. like that. Right. Yep. I first saw it at Otakon. First saw saw the first four episodes at Otakon. Then it was on. Oh wait, yeah. And then saw it on. Um, what should we call it? Uh, Toonami, mm-hmm. and uh, finished the finished the series. And boy, is it not 1973 version? <laughs> no kidding. Oh my goodness, it is not. Um, tone is all different. Cash Earn, This is not a spoiler. Cashern does not have any memory. Uh, you're told outright that he murdered Luna, mm-hmm. um, and which caused the ruin, which is where the world is basically on its last legs. It's dying. It's, mm-hmm. it's ecologically dead. Um, there's almost no human beings left. Robots are rusting away. Mm-hmm. And Cashern is the only robot. He's straight up robot. He's not an android. He's a straight up robot that can heal himself. And the the first thing that you that you come across is a bunch of robots attacking him, going, "Kill Cashern, devour Cashern," because they think that by taking him in, they themselves will become immortal. Mm-hmm. And the, and everything is gray sepia tones, and there's not a whole lot of color. Everything's dead, yeah. and it's just this tone is just like omnipresent, and it's just, just 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 pressing down on you the whole time, mm-hmm. and it is. <laughs> So not, so not. <laughs> yeah. Um, Friender, even Friender is a bit of a, you know, he's he's the Friender, the the dog, the robotic dog, mm-hmm. was you know the supposed to be the friendly dog that would go with Casher at, at at all times. And this one, he actually tries to kill Casher. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. so you know, so there's. What do you think of that? What do you think? I I I wanted. I, it, there was a replacement for something else <laughs> that I wanted Brent to watch that did not pan out well at all. And I was actually kind of wondering if it would at all. And it didn't. And that's fine. So I was just like, okay, well, we'll go in the opposite direction and we'll just give you some drama. So what do you think? is this drama? Um, so this is kind of, um, uh, oh, what's the term? Um, um, this is grim, dark, the anime. Yeah. Right. It is very angsty, very, you know, um, takes itself very seriously, anime. Very. And I'm into it. Uh, It's classic 3 a.m. anime, right? Where, you know, yeah. I am convinced two thirds of the folks who come across this anime are going to bounce straight off it. It's just (laughs) very, very much its own thing. Yeah. Um, But. And, and I will say, a, a lot of these shows tend to be, when they're a little bit darker, they're, they're a little more psychological, they tend to be more um, symbolical. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of, you know, symbolism. There's not that much in Cash and Sense. It's not trying to be Suspiria. It's not trying to be Blade Runner. Um, right. It's not trying to do that. It's just trying to be very moody, very dark, and to tackle extremely big questions. Yeah. Um, anyway, I like that. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm very distracted by a screenshot I pulled up of the, 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 a Kashan anime from the 80s, which is very much a Kashan from the 80s. Um, <laughs> uh, it's not the tone of this anime at all. Um, but yeah, it, yeah, I like the weird stuff, and this is very much... Um, this is so off the beaten path. It is so... Um, trying to say, okay, let's take this, um, again, very 70s classic kind of a, uh, you know, destroy the robot of the week story and make it modern, make it relevant, you know, make it something that people can identify with in the sense that, you know, you have these, this premise, let's take this premise and then like really ask ourselves, well, what if that was really happening? Like, what what, what, you know, what yeah. would it be like to deal with emotionally? Um, that said, again, it's, it's, it's fun is not a word I would use, but it's, <laughs> it's a joyride. Oh, it's, 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 
right. It's flour, sunshine, and sugar. That's what it is. Exactly. Um, it is so not any of that. Um, so just to give you guys an, an idea, topics that they tackle is all the characters except for Kasher know they're dying. Mm-hmm. Period. Like it's it's like they're they're like it's going to end. We don't and and they don't want it to end. Just just as any living sentient being mostly would be like, no, I don't I don't want to die. Yeah. And it's and it's sad. Mm-hmm. And the way that they're, that they're trying to deal with this, even with the belief that if you devour Kashrin, mm-hmm. kill Kashrin, devour Kashrin, um, that you will somehow um, be saved. You know, just like you know eating the the, the, the Eucharist. Mm-hmm. And and you know that kind of thing, and <clears throat> even then they're like, I don't even know if that's going to do it. Yeah, but I kind of don't care because I, I got to do something because mm-hmm. I can't just sit and rust away. Yeah, and and keep in mind that the world is at a point right now where everything is gone and rusting away. Mm-hmm. There is no civilization. There are no buildings. There are no yeah. or very few buildings. And what buildings yeah. there are are shells, mm-hmm. and everything is dark. Everything it, there's no life. Even the one human being he comes across. Is is just like oh yeah we're all gonna die yeah, yeah. <laughs> can you kill that lizard for me so I can eat it you know mm-hmm. kind of thing yeah and you know so it's just it, it it you know who am I I'm dying why is this important yeah. why why do I not want to die even though I'm a robot this should not be ha- and that's the other part is a lot of these are in denial this shouldn't be happening I'm a robot we should be lording over the humans but the humans are almost all dead mm-hmm. and we're rusting away. And they make a really big point of that in the animation where once the, the battles happen and the robots are defeated and they're laying there, they actually crumble. Yeah. You know. Right. So and, and it is a dead world, by the way, folks. There and there is no intent in the first three episodes mm-hmm. to save the world. Mm-hmm. Like they're they're yeah. just like, no, we're, yeah. it's done. Yeah. It's done. Mm-hmm. It's done. It, we're, it, we're, it, it's very much cash earned. Kashern has amnesia. He doesn't know what happened, so he's kind of right. wondering what happened in the past, and that's kind of the the motivating kind of question of the, the, the beginning. Uh, which again, I think is a, is a really interesting way of taking it because obviously the audience doesn't know either, so you kind of go right. with, with him, um, and and you do have this interesting premise. That, you know, humans are mortal. They invent robots that are immortal, but then. Um, the robots kind of take over and dominate the humans, but then the robots become mortal. Um, and just the, the great tragedy of that, I thought it was, a, it was a really interesting yeah. kind of a very Wagnerian kind of yeah. concept. It, it, and, and just a warning for any of you who want to get into this, and I, and I am actually telling you to get into this anime. Mm-hmm. If, if you want to give it a try, please do. Yeah. But here's the warning. Um, it's like this through 99% of the anime. Mm-hmm. This is what it is. Mm-hmm. Some very interesting stories that you come across, but mm-hmm. basically the same premise in each and every one of them. Mm-hmm. I'm doing the thing because I, what else am I going to do? Yeah. It reminded me a bit of Galaxy Express 3 Nights, actually. Um, yeah, okay, yeah. That idea of, yeah, I, I have this mission that I'm going for that's probably not going to work, that's probably doomed, you know, but I kind of try to do this, but I'm seeing all these other things happening along the, the way of people trying to do things and failing or whatever. Right. Um, had that, that feel a little bit to me. Also, um, kind of 90s anime. Um, I mean, Kenshin is basically Hiro Yui from Gundam Wing. It's just, it, he is. Good um, point. Oh my God, I didn't even <laughs> think about that. He the, does the look hair, like Hiro Yui. Yeah, the hair. The personality. Yeah, the hair. Yeah. There, there's another robot that goes, oh, you're beautiful. And then they just do a shot of it. I'm just like, oh my God, it is. Yeah, you're right. It is Hiro Yui. I'm just like, oh. now I'm thinking about it. I'm just like, oh God. But there's no Ray Lena, so, you know, sorry. Well, exactly, yes. Um, <laughs> but, it, but it also has that very, that very, and again, it kind of reminded me of that, that the very angsty, condom weird, right. you know, aesthetic of just, you know, yeah. everybody's up to 11 emotionally, and, and, you know. <laughs> Philosophically, um, this is very interesting. Um, but yeah, it's it's it's, it's really cool. Twenty six episodes. So it's 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 a, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a bit of a, a, a lot to get through, you know, emotionally. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, think think of twenty six episodes of um, of of Grave of the Fireflies. Yeah. <laughs> I will say though, the one advantage it has is I think one could watch episode one, and episode one doesn't really tell you much about the rest of the plot. It will just kind of, it's almost like a tone poem of here's kind of what this show feels like. 
So I think this is one of those this is one of those rare shows where you could totally watch episode one and use that to decide whether you want to watch the rest of the show or not. Yeah, and you're not going to feel not oh much. well, I you know I've I've kind of been yeah. pulled into the plot. No, no, it, it tells you. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. It, it, you will know what this is in the first episode. Sunshine sugar. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> it's, it's 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 a thing. It's a, thing. Uh, a lot of a lot of yeah. It's, just, it's, a, it's a lot. Um, all right, let's talk wizardry. Ooh, which is a lot in a very different sense. <laughs> Enjoyable though. Yeah, um, I came across wizardry because um, I'm old and I remember video games from the from the nineties. Indeed, the 80s, um, in some cases. Um, and I remember seeing Wizardry at being a thing, being a video game series. And just one day, scrolling through, I saw there was a, a 1980s Wizardry OVA. Like some Japanese studio had made an, an anime out of this Western, you know, Dungeons and Dragons-esque RPG. And I was like, oh, I've got to see that. I've got to figure that. You know what? You remember that um, when we used to do the um, like the, the weird anime Fridays? We watched yeah. some obscure anime Fridays. I found a playlist of like just obscure eighties anime, and it was on that playlist. And that was where I was like, "Oh, <laughs> oh wow!" I bet. Yeah, <laughs> just kidding. Um, so yeah, Wizardry again, very successful. Um, actually, sort of quasi three D. Um, uh, dungeon crawling RPG back in the day, certainly multiple sequels. Um, and then they made this this anime. Now, the, the anime is based on the plot of the original game. Um, so you are kind of getting an adaptation of that, kind of, sort of, a little bit. Um, and boy, were they concerned with being faithful. And how? Because I was thoroughly confused. <laughs> um, so... So watching it, and and mm-hmm. by the way, when when we gave each other the the the, the anime to watch, mm-hmm. you know, we 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 gave the links to like the my anime list or, or you know whatever, so there would be some type of des- a description. And I typically don't read those. I just mm-hmm. kind of like maybe just kind of lean the information like, okay, this is the eighties. Here's the thing, mm-hmm. and maybe so and so is in this. I don't really re- read the plot because I like to to experience on my own. So I'm watching this, not realizing it's a game. By the way, I never played the game. Never yeah, even knew yeah. it was a game yeah. and, and never even knew it existed. Um, but I'm watching this thing and suddenly there's annotation. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, why is it, why are things being explained? Wait a minute, I gotta, it's like, a, like, like, okay, so you're watching the anime and the top third is like, this, suddenly the spell happens and then there's this explain, explanation of the spell. <laughs> and I don't mean it's just like, oh, it's a fire spell. No, it's a fire spell that has to be done. And it's just like, you know, like four lines. And you just, I'm like, going, uh, uh, okay, this is supposed to be like, what, 15 minutes? It took me like, you know, an hour and a half. Because I'm like, uh, uh, okay, is this important? Do I need to know this? I, uh, you know? And so it's annotated. So I was just yeah. like, what? I'm like, I'm like, uh, wait, what? So I watched it. And, I, you know, I, I, the thing that made me laugh was, when they're in the in the elevator yeah. thing inside the dungeon, mm. like, and they're going up, like after, and it's like water cooler talk, right? No, it's just like you know, they're standing there. Well, Bob, you know, you know, the, the work was really something today. You almost got you. Yeah, I know. You almost ripped my throat out, but you know, thanks for that assist. Thanks, <laughs> yeah. buddy. We'll have a brew after this. Literally, that's the conversation, yeah. mm-hmm. and they're just talking like this as the, as as the little weird floor elevator goes up the levels mm-hmm. and they're just talking mm-hmm. and it's just like it's, okay and they go to the they go to the thing they go to the bar mm-hmm. and it's all adventurers mm-hmm. and they're all standing there and they're all looking at each other talking about going into the dungeon and you realize that this is the industry yeah, yeah there's coal towns coal mining towns mm-hmm. no this is dungeon town exactly. so I, you know you know I'm, i would not shock me if you know, in the lore of the anime, they're going, yeah, they all go to the school from pre-K to, to eighth grade, <laughs> learning how to adventure, mm-hmm. and you know, so they go through this whole, this, so they all go through the same dungeon. That's the other part of it. So all these people are going through yeah. all these dungeons, mm-hmm. all ten floors of it, and and the idea is that the big bad is down at the at the lower level, who's about to 
you know, break the crystal that will enable him to take over the world, whatever. And everyone's just like, yeah, we're just going to go in and get the gold. We don't, we don't really care about this. And then, you know, it goes through and it becomes the Lords of the Ring. I mean, that's to me, that's what it came like. And we even have a dwarven mage and we have a hobbit mm-hmm. of yep. sorts. And um, they pair up with, with the adventurers. They come across another adventuring company that's been slaughtered except for the one you know cute mage girl of who's looking for her boyfriend. Meanwhile, the leader of the group or the other group's like creeping on her. Mm. And and I was like, where are we going with this? <laughs> this is fantastic, but where are we going with this? There's a lot. And and they, they bring up the Mursawa, Mursawa sword. And I'm like, mm. like I, uh, oh, God, pause. <laughs> Uh, I'm sort of only certain yeah. people. Yeah. No, 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 no. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Okay, okay. Dude looks like fish of the North Star, but okay, I got it. Know you know. Very much, yep. And and watching this thing, and it was a great time. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I yeah. thoroughly enjoyed watching it. And, you know, even with the annotation, having to stop and watch it, and just the ridiculousness of it. But it's definitely three a.m. because that's what it is. I mean, there's mm-hmm. nothing more than that. There's there's nothing. I just like I love how like and and things happen. Oh yeah, things happen. Our hero is in the midst of an attack, and his arm gets chopped off. Yeah, <laughs> and you're like, "Wait, we've got 34 minutes left to go. His arm's gone." Healing magic, it, it, and that's exactly <laughs> what happened. And I got to read the annotated it, spell it, for that yeah. one. Um, so this is the thing I, I, we discovered: what was going on here? Um, which I, I, I find hilarious. Um, so in the turns out in the video game, when you're casting a spell, um, you have to type in the name of the spell. There's no like spell list you choose from. The game just knows it has this list of you know a bunch of spells. And so when you cast a spell, you do type the thing. Which means when you're playing the game, you have to come across spells, write down what those names are, and then in combat you can type that in and use that spell. It's a very very interesting naturalistic thing. But so then in the anime comes along and they're doing the spells and they want to say, no, 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 you know, this guy says, you know, Esmera. Esmera is a healing spell that does A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, you know, so, yeah, nope, we, we, we did our research. Like, this is the actual thing he's doing. Um, the, the, the uh, was it the, um, Murasawa sword, whatever it is. I guess yeah. that's an, that's an item in the game. That's a big, you know, one of those powerful swords in the game. That's a thing. Um, you know, all of this, it all pulls in. Everything everything connects. Like they, they had to show their work. <laughs> they had to have a little bibliography. And, and, and so, you know, if you have to type this in during the game, I would I would fail so bad. <laughs> oh, my God, I had the caps lock on. Oh, no. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, oh. Character said, I can't, I can't spell that. Is that, a, is that an A or an S? Oh my God, I can't read my own writing. What the heck? Yeah. And, and, I, and I love how one of the, the, the big bads of Vampire Lord. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, Evil Wizard and Vampire Lord. It's, it's, and, yeah. It's one of the great things is, is you know, people always, or people are, are, are often trying to like play around with fantasy and like, oh, what, what, what's your thing? This is not doing any of that. This is Mm-mm. all the tropes. Like yeah. all of them, just right there, right down the middle, and it's glorious. I mean, Vampire Lord dude just could have been like, you know, oh wow, what glam rock band is he from? I mean, it was just like <laughs> glorious air, mm-hmm. great yeah. outfit, I guess. <laughs> um, he doesn't just, really do anything. No, him. no, he's he's just there to be threatening, be threatening and sexy. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because um, we all know vampires are always sexy. Right, exactly. Um, he doesn't glitter. You know, that, that's, yeah. That, that's good. Yeah. Um, I was waiting for his annotation. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and then the, 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 the weird... Obviously, there's no... As far as I know, there's no romance storyline in, in right. the game. And so that whole thing just feels very... Feels very tacked <laughs> on. <laughs> Oh yeah, we gotta give the the people who are just watching this thing, and and they're the, probably somebody was who was writing the script was saying, okay, it can't all be the game. We gotta put <laughs> something in here. We gotta put something in here. Mm-hmm. So, 
And I got the sense that there was supposed to be more after this, but you know, and oh, and I and I love the part where they're like, "Well, we'll just take the bodies to the resurrection temple." Yeah. <laughs> and then one of the did. one of the characters who's like Mister Heal It All, you know, it, it's, you're just like, "Oh, it's too bad the temple couldn't help him." It's like, <laughs> <laughs> I can say the idiots who got killed on the first level of dungeon, but you can't save this guy. <laughs> Okay. It's great though. It is yeah. it is fun. Three AM laugh out loud. Just fun. Yeah. It's 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 worth it's it's worth the weight in gold. Hey, there we All go. Right? There we go. Nice. Um, right. it's digital. There you go. There's this worth. Um. All right. Let's finish it out with. Yes. An anime that I'm sure no one has heard of here. <laughs> Do Omega D. Um, I have no idea where on earth I came across this. Um, I don't either. I, I, boy, I think this may have been one of those, you know, um, oh, here's a mecha series from the 70s. Let me just give that a try. Um, and that is not what that is. <laughs> no, at all. <laughs> so... When you when you gave me the list and I saw the thing and I saw the title and I was, and, and I was just like oh okay um, a mecha big robot mm -hmm. okay so we're gonna do something from late seventies early eighties I'm like one okay 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 and and the hero looks the part you know he's oh, yeah. got like you know the like the um, the uniform he's got a cap on and he's got the 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 the, the huge four yeah. forelock. Of hair, the four, big four like hair of heroism. Yeah, it's like, like a, you know, coming out. And so, I, so when you said said that to me, I'm like, like, oh, okay, big robot, you know, no big deal. And I started watching it, and with it, and then I first realized that it's only like four minutes long. And I'm like, <laughs> wait a minute. And then it's it's like I'm watching it, and I'll go, hang on, wait a minute. When was this actually made? <laughs> Something's not right here. So this is dude who works in the sweet shop, third generation or fifth generation, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, these people, this, this is so true, because if you work in retail, you, you'll appreciate mm -hmm. this. People come in and they're angry because they can't get the whatever it is that they want. And they turn into these kaiju <laughs> and and start wrecking the, the tourism place of outside of Kyoto or whatever. Mm -hmm. So he's working in this like fifth generation uh sweet shops and he's just like and you know the thing is happening with the perky reporter who never blinks <laughs> oh no and the kaiju it's always finally the kaiju is killing people what are we going to do i'm going to die and so the hero he's just like he doesn't know what to do he falls downstairs and you know discovers that he has this huge mecca in there and so he goes into the pilot cabin and the pilot cabin is a kitchen <laughs> At this point, at this point, when that happened, I was just like, there is something so not right here. <laughs> I am not watching a big robot anime from 1970, <laughs> 1970s or 80s. And sure enough, I'm not. It's it's just a spoof of mm -hmm. these kinds of things. And so it's it's just an anime about your irate customer turning into Kaiju of the Week <laughs> kind of thing. And this guy is just like, he, he gets in the mecha and he's just like, I know what to do. I'm going to make a real dish and he describe what the real dish is. Mm -hmm. And he does the thing and the action sequence is, and we're going to stir the flour. And it's literally this giant <laughs> mecha with a bowl and, a, and an egg beater going, and going, stir, 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 stir. <laughs> and then he makes the thing magically. Mm -hmm. Then the attack, the final finishing move is him sliding on his knees in the mecha with his hands out with the food and gives it to the kaiju and the person and the kaiju eats and reverts back to the to the person who's now stated because you know that's what we do with bad customers and it was glorious <laughs> i loved it i thought it was brilliant i i just because they were only like four or five minutes long i binged all the episodes at one time i was just like i have got to finish it is Oh my God! This is three AM anime. This is this is this is the folks. This is the one. This is the one that you sit down and you watch through the whole thing, and you're just like, you know what? 
I might forget about this in two years, but it doesn't matter because I'm living in the glory of the moment of the huge Formlock hair of heroism. This I, is awesome. And what I love about this is, you know, all the different levels to it, where on the one hand, like, and this is a 2015 anime. <laughs> it um, doesn't look like doesn't it look at it. first. No, I mean, the, 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 it is deliberately very cheap, cheesy, and like, to your point of, you know, yeah, right. <laughs> um, just, just really, just really, very, very much of that. Um, but then also combining it with you know all the recent, you know, you got to have your twist, you got to have your right. You know, the the Japanese restaurant, you know, association is co-funding the anime, <laughs> so like you know, it's all about cooking, um, and that's all folded into there, and it's just. So many things going on at once, and it's just just so wonderful. But then also the fact that it's not mean spirited at all. Like it's very no, much. It's, it's, no. it's just enjoying, you know, what this is and how ridiculous and awesome it is. Because I'm not gonna lie, there's some of them that I was just like, oh, uh, you know, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll try that. I'll try that. <laughs> hey, come to Baltimore, Giant Mecca. Give me some food, exactly. Please. <laughs> I know you grow out a frog of hair. Just like, you know, <laughs> hey, out. Oh yes! It was it. It was I. It, it, in all honesty, folks, watch this one. It is truly a gem. It, it really is a gem. And I, you know, I'm waiting for someone to make an AMV out of it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So like, it um, is. And, and so, 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 thank you, Brent, for letting welcome. me watch. Where I watch this, watch this thing. Glad I was able to find it and, and add it to the list. It um. is glorious. Glorious. <laughs> Brilliant and glorious. <laughs> All right, folks. So that is our our uh, three AM anime. Uh, thank you so much for watching and listening to us talk about the anime. And thank with, you, Steve, uh, for Brent. doing this and for suggesting it yeah, and for yeah. organizing it. Appreciate that. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah. And um, so you know, while you guys are in chat land and you're waiting for the next thing for OnCon, because thank you so much for being here at OnCon, because OnCon is awesome and i hope you guys are having a good time in the chat what what is your favorite 3 a.m anime what's what's the one that that you watch at 3 a.m and go it's all so good it's so bad it's so awful it's brilliant what 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 do you have out there what do you think any 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 last thoughts there brent uh no i just i i love this whole concept because there's so much anime it does fall in that sort of side category where, like, this is just so off the beaten path that I couldn't recommend it to like the, the regular person. I couldn't, you know, it, it just doesn't fit. Right. Um, but you know, I I love it or I appreciate it or I just just find it so interesting for trying to you know. Um, that we've had two shows on here that take something from the seventies and completely <laughs> reimagines it. <laughs> Um, it is awesome it's great to think about all right well again thank you folks uh thank you for watching the panel thank you so much and enjoy the rest of oncon